وربما إسرائيل تسعى إلى أن تنهي السلطة وأن يكون هناك فراغ كامل. And what after the Palestinian Authority collapses? What then? This is the Israeli point of view, but we do not see it as possible or even suitable. To the contrary, we have to fight this with all conceivable means. After a few days, uh, Mr. President, Palestinians will be commemorating the 1967 war, 40 years of Israeli occupation, while a, a lot of Israeli officials are saying that a return to the 1967 borders is simply not possible for Israel. How do you view that? What, what do you think will happen uh, from here on end? We state that the Oslo Accords are there and they may not be to the liking of many. They refer to the six issues of the final settlement, namely the refugees, borders, settlements and Jerusalem. After Oslo, there was a vacuum for many reasons, mainly the siege imposed on the late President Yasser Arafat. We have key legal and political references, namely the roadmap plan. This plan includes two substantial and significant items. The first is the vision of the American President, Bush. He says verbatim, an independent, democratic and viable Palestinian state living side by side in peace and security with Israel and its other neighbors, which is fine by us. He also says an end to the occupation that began in 1967. The other relevant issue is the Arab Peace Initiative, which also includes two key items. One, if Israel withdraws from the occupied Arab and Palestinian territories, we as Arab and Muslim states will normalize our relations with Israel. This peace initiative is not properly understood by the world, the US or Israel. Even the Arab states wasted the essence of this initiative since 2002, despite the fact that it's the most valuable achievement in the history of the Arab-Israeli conflict, as Saudi Arabia proposed an initiative to normalize with Israel if it withdraws. Now all the Arab and Muslim states, without exception, agree to normalize their relations with Israel if it withdraws from the occupied territories. Thus, it would restore its diplomatic relations with one-third of the world states, 57 states. If Israel refuses to withdraw to the 1967 borders and solve the refugee and Jerusalem issues, this proves they have no intention of finding a solution. Let's expose their stand. We have to declare our acceptance of the said principles while Israel declines. It's the duty of Arabs, Muslims and Palestinians to clarify our position, reiterate that we strive for peace. We don't want to destroy or attack Israel, but Israel must end its aggression and occupation. And if the Israelis do that, they would be rewarded with this prize. I believe that if the Israelis turn their back on this initiative, they're depriving themselves of the most invaluable opportunity in history. When the initiative came to light in 2002, opinion polls in Israel and the United States showed that 70% of Israelis and Palestinians approved of it. Many people, including Palestinians, have not read the initiative, and that's why we want to circulate it widely. Because once understood, no politician seeking a solution for the Palestinian cause would be able to reject it. There's been a lot of talk, especially here in the local media, Mr. President, about the American administration funding your presidential guard and providing it with weapons and arms and ammunition and, and even money. What's the truth? Is there any truth to all of that? Yani, uh, uh, we are in the internet era and globalization. Secrets no longer exist. In one word, I say, we have not received any assistance, and they have to prove the contrary. It's all propaganda. It's 90 million one time and 59 million another. They say the presidential guards are receiving reinforcements, and so is the president. I would answer all these rumors with deep regret. You have not offered us anything. I repeat, we have not received any assistance from them, and they have to prove the contrary to refute our statement.
ولا لم يصل شيء. Ehud Barak and Amia Yelon will be competing for the leadership of the Labour Party. You know both men and you weren't able to reach a peace deal. The Palestinians weren't able to reach a peace deal with Ehud Barak in Camp David in 2000. I know you don't like to comment about internal Israeli affairs, but how do you see the Palestinian-Israeli relationship developing over the, uh, over the next few uh, weeks or months, especially that either of these men may become the leader of the Labour Party or even the Prime Minister of Israel? We have no right to evaluate others, especially our neighbours. We simply have to deal with the person elected by the Israeli people. We will deal with the Labour Party through the person elected by the party. The same applies to other parties, including Kadima, Likud and so on. We deal with the person appointed to lead the Israeli government. As I told you, we have dealt with Ishaq Rabin, Netanyahu, Barak and Ariel Sharon until his last days. And then with Ehud Olmert. It is not in our interest, especially with the election race in Israel, to say we favour this or that. In the coming years, do you really think a peace solution, a peace deal is possible with Israel? When the Israelis realize their need for a solution, they will find the solution simple and painless. When we drafted the Oslo Accords, no one imagined we could reach and declare these principles in eight months. It was a surprise to the entire world, to the US, Russia and even our brotherly states. If we sit at the negotiating table and there is good will and a genuine desire to reach a settlement, it will be within reach. But if there is intentional procrastination and delay and the use of force, peace becomes far off. The Israelis must understand that we have accepted what international legitimacy accepted for us and it's much less than our historical rights. They cannot force us to accept less than that, because it would be impossible to accept less than what scores of international organizations granted us, or what Bush's vision says. In the end, I cannot come to the people and say I've compromised on the 1967 borders, or refugees, or Jerusalem. I would not bear that. And the proof is that we did not sign a peace deal with Israel in Camp David, because the proposed agreement entailed compromises that neither Yasser Arafat nor anyone else could tolerate. Many have talked about the Somali syndrome in the Gaza Strip, that it's become a no-go zone for foreigners, a place nobody is daring to go to. And they point to the kidnapping of our colleague, Alan Johnston of the BBC. He's still being kidnapped, and he was kidnapped by a group that also claimed responsibility for the kidnapping of the Israeli corporal, Dilat Shalit, along with two other Palestinian factions. Do you think there is such a phenomena happening here in the Gaza Strip? Those who captured Gilad Shalit are a different group from those who kidnapped the journalist Alan Johnston, and both the captured are alive, by the way. As for Shalit, there are negotiations between Egypt and Israel with Hamas to strike a deal which has not been reached until now. However, the current lawlessness is obstructing the search for Alan Johnston. The harsh economic, political and security conditions provide an environment in which such groups breed. They are alien to our society. We are a conservative society, but not extremist. Our people are very religious, but not extremist. On the contrary, they are an enlightened, educated, knowledgeable people. Such a phenomenon is unfamiliar to our culture. Groups like Fatah al-Islam, that is true. Fatah al-Islam is not a Palestinian group in the first place, nor is it a Palestinian movement. Thus, we in the PLO leadership and all other political factions here and in Lebanon declared that we have no relation with Fatah al-Islam. They entered Lebanon, we do not know how, and settled in the camps where the government has no control. They clashed with the Lebanese army, killed its officers and then robbed banks. We support Lebanon's sovereignty, its government and its army, not this group. And what about the residents of Nahr al-Barid refugee camp? They're paying the price for uh, the presence of Fatah al-Islam in the refugee camp. What about them? 
Regrettably, the residents of the Nahr al-Barid refugee camp are paying the price, but the majority of the residents have fled. Only a few now remain inside, and we hope they do not suffer any harm. We also hope the Lebanese government will find a solution on the principle that Fatah al-Islam surrenders to the Lebanese authorities to face justice in Lebanese courts, and we have confidence that justice would be served in the Lebanese justice system. Last question, Mr. President. The last time you came here to Gaza on this visit, you postponed your trip for security reasons. Is there a threat to your life here in Gaza? I did not postpone my visit to Gaza. I was here only two days before the internal clashes erupted. After that, I kept an eye on events from Ramallah, and when the crisis was prolonged, I came to Gaza again. Despite the risk, Gaza is part of my homeland, and regardless of any threat, I must be among my people here to deal with their problems, to strive to solve them. We cannot avert threats by escaping the perils, otherwise we will not be able to provide any solution to any problem. Mr. President, thank you very much for joining us and answering all our questions here at Al Jazeera. And thank you very much for joining Talk to Al Jazeera. See you next time.